Hello, and welcome to another video, where today I will be talking about, just as the title suggests, some spying, lying, and other corruption of those in power. Now when I say those in power, I presume that many of you think the government is the first thing that pops into your head when I say those in power or with power with power not in power in power even more so implies government because they were put into that position by the people in most cases in some cases around the world they were not put into power by the people, but however, put into power through bloodline. But, that's beside the point. I don't mean the government. Partially the government, yes, because the government does have power. But I mean lots of different people with power or groups of people with power I mean all the secretive organizations that a lot of these people that are in the government happen to belong to a lot of groups maybe they're government groups but they're not what we generally think of as the government and a lot of groups that have nothing to do with the government or secret organizations but generally hold a lot of power or maybe groups that claim to be for the betterment of the people and maybe behind closed doors are not so good it is these groups with power, these groups that those without questioning minds, those that want to just live the normal day-to-day -day life, it is these groups that those people trust, and they have been told to trust these groups. The government, for example, there are leaders. They lead us. A leader, a good leader, would not do something to harm the people following them because that will inevitably come back on the leader. But, much like a cult, these organizations, these groups, these big gatherings of people with power have figured out a way to where the bad things they do don't come back on them they stay at the level of the followers you see the people at the top of the food chain have the most power and we don't know who they are nobody knows who they are we can guess we might be able to come up with people that could possibly be up there but really nobody knows who's at the true top of the pyramid <clears throat> as far as mortal beings goes and immortal beings that's a whole nother argument but we're speaking merely about mortal beings. We don't know who's at the top. But, we know a lot of the underlings. We know a lot of the different levels of the pyramid. The leaders of countries, perhaps. The leaders of big secretive organizations, perhaps. Famous people, celebrities, rich millionaires. They all have power. It's all different levels of power though who really has the most power 
it's a tricky question. And the way I like to think about it is there are really two types of power. You see, there is perceived power and there is actual power. Perceived power and those with it do contain some amount of actual power because they have to in order to get the perception that they have power it's very very hard to completely fake something and have it be believable to the mass majority of people so they do have to have some level of power but really they're very low on the totem pole but those with actual power they are very high on the totem pole. And the difference being, the person with the perceived power to the common person, that's who they know. That's who they think has the power. They don't hear about the person with the actual power. This is the real scale. This is the scale we see. This is the scapegoat with this amount of power right here. But we see them as this. They are the puppet placed out in front of everyone else being controlled by the people above them. The people we don't see, the people we don't know about, the people with the actual power, the people that do the majority of the corrupt actions. <clears throat> but you might say well, how can it be that we don't know who they are? Because constantly we're hearing about either accusations or actual convictions of these people with power getting caught for terrible things. More terrible than the spying and the lying. But I don't want to go into too much detail about the more gruesome things. So we're sticking to the tamer side, although there are lots and lots of despicable horrible actions that these people in power do people with power i have to keep correcting myself it's it's easy to say in what i mean with you don't have to be in power to be someone with power a lot of people with power according to general guidelines and rule sets of society are no different than us but yet they walk all over us like millionaires and billionaires they should not have any more say so in what is happening than us they're not any sort of official government person they don't, they don't make the rules, yet they don't have to play by them because they have enough money to buy their way out of playing by the rules, in most cases. Now, if enough word gets out about what they're doing, then they tend to get caught. Or, if the puppeteer stops liking their little puppet, they have a tendency to get caught because the strings are cut and they fall and they lose their perceived power. If you lose your good standing with the puppeteers, you will no longer have your power. And thus, you will be drugged through the mud whether it is that you actually did horrible things or not it will be proven proven that you have did them and I'm not saying that these people with perceived power have not done terrible things because most certainly they have if you have perceived power as long as you seem like you have power you have power if the people believe it it is true that is how it goes so they can get away with nearly anything until they suddenly fall and lose their power. So I do believe 
that a lot of these people actually do terrible things. But think about the amount that end up getting punished for it versus the amount that there actually are in the world. The amount of terrible people who can just get away with anything. They can literally get away with murder. It's because they have that perceived power cast onto them from the puppeteer way up here. So that is the little introduction to what I will be talking about today. Now to move on to some of the ways that they like to use their power, whether it be the perceived or the puppeteer, they go hand in hand. They both use their power to manipulate and control and spy on society. The civilians, the innocent people who just want to live their life, the ones without any power in the system. And the funny part, the funny part about the system is that in most cases, whether it's on the small scale of a little group or the big scale of an entire nation, in most cases, the people with the power, albeit in the grand scale of things, it may be a very small amount of power, but in the specific scenario of what we are talking about, is quite a big amount of power. They like to pretend like the people down here, the, the bottom feeders of society, no offense, but in the eyes of the ones in power, that's what we are. We are bottom feeders. We just scrape the surface of life clinging on to it desperately hoping we can make it to whatever pitiful end shall come. <clears throat> they like to just just keep us alive, you know, they here you go. Have have a little bit of food, have a little have here. You can have some money. You can buy something. And he's, and the, yeah, we won't we won't crush you entirely. We'll let you keep crawling along and just just live out your pathetic life. But in the process of doing that, they like to give us the illusion that, hey, you can be something one of these days. You can have power too. You have a say so in what goes on. All you gotta do is speak your mind and enough, if enough people listen to you and enough people agree, you can make a difference doesn't work like that they let some people say what they want to say and say things that make a difference because they want people to believe that they can make a difference but if something you're saying really really needs to be said and really goes against what they are trying to do You either zip it, or you die. They'll crush you. Nobody has any power except the ones who, quite frankly, were born into it. They were destined to be powerful. Whether it be pure luck, or some long, long ago ancestor grabbing that power for them and just throwing it on playing a big old game of catch down the family line whatever it may be that's how it goes sorry for that little tangent now i will get into what i was planning on getting into a couple minutes ago one of the ways they use their power is to spy on people and I'm still not quite sure why exactly they need to spy on people when they already have the people so, so far under their thumb that there is no chance of escape. 
They can do whatever they want and get away with it. They can tell people what to do and they will do it. They don't need to know what people are doing. The only reason they would need to know what people are doing is if they are planning on getting rid of people that they don't like what they are doing. Which is probably what is happening. And this may sound kind of crazy to think that everybody's spying on us, but it's been proven the government spies on us. The government spies on everything we do, whether it's electronic or not. They spy on us. They spy on not only their own citizens, which is the majority of their spying, because it's the easiest, but they spy on other countries, other, other places. They spy on everyone. They want to know what everyone in the world is doing. It's a proven fact, alright? They listen to your phone calls. They watch you through your cameras and your computer cameras. They might even watch you through your windows if you're really interesting. They... Any electronic device, especially the ones that can connect to the internet, but really any electronic device. Maybe there's a few that aren't, but most electronic devices the government can get into and through whatever that device does, they will be able to collect some form of data on you. But it's not only the government that is able to do that with these devices. It's the people that make these devices, the companies, the owners of these companies that make them devices. They can see what you're doing. They can know what you're doing. They can collect the data on you. And I think, to some extent, that has also been proven. And, uh, if they have this data, and the government has this data, then there's a group of people that are kind of left out. These, uh, secret, secret organizations. They're a little bit left out. They don't have this data. Or do they? Because a lot of the people from the government, a lot of the people from these big corporations, just might be in these secret organizations. And these secret organizations could be using your data for some cult, rituals, satanic summonings, whatever. They could be putting a curse on you for all you know. And there's nothing you can do about it. You don't even know when or when not, they are spying on you. You don't know if they are, you don't know if they aren't, you don't know to what extent, you don't know for how long, you don't know if they record everything you do and watch parts of it back later. You're not safe. You cannot trust anyone with any amount of power, whether it be perceived, whether it be actual, whether it be a very small amount, or a very large amount. The only people with power that you may, may be able to trust are the ones with power that are just right there. Here's you, here's them. They're at that level. Don't trust the ones above them. Definitely don't trust the ones above them. And definitely, definitely, definitely do not trust the ones above them. But maybe the ones that are right here. Maybe. Alright? But as far as spying goes, it gets even crazier than electronics. You see, electronics, that's the tame thing. Okay? You know what else they use to spy on people? Animals. They have spy animals, alright? They have had spy animals since the Cold War when the government was using pigeons and cats with cameras stuffed inside them to spy on the Russians. They have spy animals, alright? And if they were doing that, 
back in the 70s, the 80s, further back, maybe a little bit soon, later on, but I'm pretty sure it was, uh, it was around that time that they were doing that. If they, if they had cameras stuffed in animals back then, when you couldn't get a camera that was uh, any smaller than like that, or the regular civilian couldn't, but apparently the government could get one small enough to stuff inside a pigeon. If they could do that then, now with the technology that is available to the normal citizen, where we have cameras small enough that we could stuff inside a pigeon, not saying we should, but we could. And we definitely have ones that are very easily accessible that you could probably stuff inside a cat and see, you know, what where the cat goes, what's the cat going to do. If we have that, what do they have? They could be putting cameras inside the eyes of the animals and microphones in the ears of the animals and a little transmitter somewhere up top maybe just just a tiny one sticking up through the scalp so it can get a signal some maybe it's one that's disguised as a hair of the animal maybe they come in different colors maybe they're only the thickness of a hair but they're ultra durable so when you pet your little cat or your doggy they won't break and it's transmitting everything that your pet sees or hears to whoever put that in the pet. Now obviously they are not doing this to every single animal that would be ridiculous. They aren't going to go out and capture every bird and put cameras and microphones in them. They aren't going to go out and take everyone's dog or everyone's cat put a camera in them. They aren't going to go capture a bear in the woods and put a camera in it all right but maybe some of these animals do have cameras and microphones in them especially the pets of high priority individuals ones that might be up to something or ones they might want to keep quiet at a later date maybe the government has certain individuals or not just the government maybe any of these organizations because they all have access to the same things the secret shady devil worshiping cults that all the high-ranking people want to join the government the science groups the uh the big companies they all have access to the same stuff they can all get their hands on whatever they want so maybe certain individuals of certain interests to these groups of people or just certain people in general if they have enough power maybe they can get these animals that would be desirable to these people that they want to spy on put their cameras and microphones in them and then put the animal up for sale knowing that this person is the type of person that would want this animal because they can figure that out they know you could okay let me give you an example if you are friends with someone best friends with someone all right and they gave you a lineup of different animals and said pick the one that I would like the best with the amount of knowledge you have of that person you could probably do so very easily so if you could do that and you're not spying on them every single day imagine what these people who are spying on them every single day would be able to find out they would probably have a hundred percent accuracy rate with most things if not 
everything. So they could definitely rig it to where the people they want to spy on the most would have these rigged animals. And maybe the puppet masters up here are giving rigged animals to their little puppets and the little puppets have no idea that they have a rigged animal and the puppet master uses that animal to spy on the puppet because maybe the puppet's smart enough to know, hey, maybe I can't trust my electronic devices. You know, maybe they tapped my phone. Maybe they're looking at my computer. Maybe they're watching my TV. Maybe they're looking at my window. Let me close the blinds. But you gotta trust Fido, right? No. If they want to spy on you, there is nothing you can do to stop them from spying on you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you think you know or what you actually know. They are always one step ahead of you. Because we're just the civilians. If they can control their puppets, who do have some amount of power, they sure as heck can control us. Now the other thing I would like to talk about is the lies. The blatant, bold-faced lies that these people with power tell us in order to keep us doing what they want. It is a proven fact that the government has lied to us multiple times. There are many times that they have admitted to lying to us. And so there's the government level, all right? Proof that they have lied. Now, what about the, uh, the companies, all right? There's proof that they lie too. They have admitted that they have lied or less so admitted to and more so have been caught lying, blatantly lying to us. And I'm sure you could find examples of both of these things if you Google them. I don't have any off the top of my head because I did not go and write a script. I did not go and look up links and all that such of research before this. But I know that there are examples of it. Especially the government one. Because they do a lot of shady things during wartime. They will lie and lie and lie and lie and get the people. They will lie to you to any extent just to get you to be behind them on a war and get you to think that they are in the right about a war so they can run on in grab whatever money they want grab whatever thing they uh they desire take the land take the oil take take a uh, fancy little pebble you know maybe they just wanted wanted some some uh, fancy looking rocks who knows it's not like they need them. It's not like it's not like they need any more money. It's not like they need any more oil. It's not like they need any more land. They just want to take and take and take, okay? And they will get you to believe they're in the right by lying to you and manipulating you into thinking that they are in the right just so they can do it and not have any backlash for it. And then maybe, just maybe, once the whole thing's over, they'll be like, Hey, guys, I'm sorry I fibbed a little. But hey, at least I admitted it. I'm a good guy, right? No. No. Not at all. Not at all. So, um, the other, the other thing. Science. Science lies to us constantly. If you go back a hundred years from now, what the scientists were saying is nothing like 
current day, scientists are saying. Heck, even five years back, they had different ideas about things than they do now. And each increment of time that goes by, science is changing. Does that mean they are just so stupid that they are constantly wrong about everything they say? Or does it mean that they are constantly saying incorrect things to get us to believe and what they want us to believe at that current time and then maybe they change it later take cigarettes for example alright back in the day doctors recommended smoking they said smoking was a good thing the cigarette companies probably had something to do with that with their money but According to medicine, which is a form of science, smoking was a good thing. And uh, now, look what they're saying. Smoking causes cancer. Ban cigarettes. Tobacco, bad. Alright. And cancer is a real, real funny thing. Not, well, cancer itself is not, but the way they use it is kind of funny because... How long has cancer been around? And it's only recently that there's this whole gigantic scare of it. And it's like, oh, wow, everybody's getting cancer. Oh my goodness, that causes cancer, that causes cancer, that causes cancer. Wow, the air we breathe, it causes cancer. Human contact, oh wow, do you cause cancer? Do I cause cancer? Does these glasses cause cancer? Does that green screen cause cancer? Oh my. <gasps> Everything causes cancer. Wow. Whoa. Huh? Okay. Think of every single thing that, that causes cancer. Alright? Now, tell me. How many of those things have you came in contact with? Do you have cancer? Does it really cause cancer? Is it really that scary and risky? Okay. I don't think so. Do I think some things may uh, may cause cancer? Yeah, sure. Do I think all the things that they're saying causes cancer cause cancer? Possibly. But, I don't think we need to be worried about it because I think this was all planned. Alright, and let's go back to the cigarette example okay they there is no way that they didn't know from the very beginning that cigarettes were unhealthy how can someone think that inhaling something that is not oxygen the thing that is supposed to go into our lungs okay Something that is not the air around us, not saying the air around us is healthy either, because it's polluted to, to an extent that is undescribable, but it's a lot better than just inhaling pure smoke of any kind, okay? And this may be a little bit controversial, but I, uh, I have the idea that marijuana is the new tobacco okay they're pushing it all right they're the government's pretending like they don't like it and they want to keep it illegal but they're pushing for it all right they got everybody behind it they're pushing it and guess what it's still smoke it's not air oxygen goes in your lungs oxygen is healthy oxygen is what we are meant to breathe we are not meant to breathe smoke we're not meant to have ashes and dust filling our lungs. I don't care what kind of mystical, magical properties they may tell you they have. If it ain't the air around us, or even a cleaner form of air, if you can possibly get that, don't breathe it! It's not meant to go into your body. We weren't... Okay, if you're a fish, you breathe water. If you're a human, you breathe air. You don't breathe smoke. Alright? Smoke? No good.
but they're pushing it they're saying it's good for you and it's science science is telling you hey look at this it's good for you and I bet you I bet you 30 years from now 40 years from now if not sooner than that they'll be backtracking and they'll be telling you hey whoa it's bad for you stop it we were wrong because science is always wrong every single thing they say is wrong all right and guess who's the one to figure out that it's wrong them they say it wait a couple years oh looks like we were wrong they're never right about anything they are just making things up and lying to get people to do what they want them to do and science and the government are hand in hand the government tells the scientists what the government wants and the scientists tell the people what will make the people do what the government wants the people to do if scientists say hey cigarettes are good for you people most people are gonna be like oh wow science says cigarettes are good for me man they have big brains I think I'll take up smoking and if scientists say marijuana is good for you and there's hundreds of studies to prove it scientific research wow looks like I'm gonna start smoking weed don't believe anything they say nothing if it's a scientist or if it's a government person or if it's anyone with power don't believe them I don't care how attractive whatever they're saying might be chances are it's not real and a few years down the line they're going to come out and say it's not real or you'll be dead don't believe them they're lying everything they say is a lie spies lies and other devious actions are the three components of people with power some people believe that they are actual snakes I'm not quite in that camp not certain about the whole reptile thing but for sure they are metaphorical snakes they will sneak up and bite you with no remorse just for their own good they don't even even if they can't eat you they will kill you they don't need the food they just want to kill they just want to be in control they want to be in charge they might be threatened by you we're, we're using the snake metaphor still in case uh, in case you're not clear um, although I'm sure some people in power or some people with power uh, do partake in cannibalism uh, without a doubt with all the other disgusting things they do that one's uh, I would say it's like here's murder here's cannibalism uh, but really that's pretty low on the list of despicable things there's plenty of things that are worse I mean if you kill someone uh, depending on how you do it it's not that evil I mean plenty of good people kill people for good reasons for and plenty of bad people kill bad plenty of bad people kill good people for bad reasons but if it's not a torturous painful way it's not as bad or at least that is my opinion and some people may disagree some people may say death is death and death is bad but I believe the amount of pain one goes through in the process does have an effect on how bad the death is and if you're already dead and someone eats you I mean it's not really that much worse than being dead the only thing is it's kind of disgusting on the person who's eating you side of things I mean it's like you're not supposed to do that but it's not harming the person who's dead anymore the dead body isn't gonna feel pain it's not gonna feel being digested okay but it's disgusting nonetheless uh, but there there 
definitely things more disgusting though. Okay, it's the, I'm not not gonna get into them, but there's yeah, there's more disgusting things that happen. Um, so snakes. They are snakes in the metaphorical sense. A snake just wants to survive. It wants to be the boss of its territory. Alright? We're talking the, the poison, the venomous snakes. They will bite anything and kill anything that gets in their way all right if it wants to go somewhere and something is stopping it from going where it wants to go it'll kill it it'll get it out of its way a lot of creatures kill to survive they kill to not starve those creatures are on the same level we're at the snake kills for whatever it feels like killing for. It doesn't need a good reason or a justified reason. It barely needs a reason at all. And that is why the people with power are snakes. They will kill you without any more... They will kill you without any remorse, without any rhyme, without any reason, and they will do it when you least expect it. Because they've been lying, and manipulating you, and spying on you, and plotting the perfect time to do it for your entire life, ever since you were a little baby, all the way up until the time they, they kill you. They might kill you when you're a baby. Sorry to say it, they might. That's the type of people you're dealing with. They're despicable snakes. Alright? Don't trust them. Do not trust them. That's about it. I'm not sure how long this video is so far, but I do want to leave you with one last thing. It's not really related to the topic, but it's just another little word of advice. There is a difference between truth, fact, and reality. Truth is what someone believes. Some Something someone believes. Alright? If I say I am telling the truth, I am saying that I am saying something that I personally believe is reality. That is what is considered a truth. A truth is something that whoever tells you it is a truth personally believes. It does not make it real. It just makes it that person's perception of real. A fact. A fact is something a group of people believe is true. Alright? It's something that multiple people would tell you is a truth. A fact is always a truth. A truth is not always a fact. Alright. Next one. Reality. Reality does not have to be either truth nor fact because it is merely it. Reality is reality whether anyone believes it or not. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.